Hello and welcome to International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the major news developments from across the globe. Our main stories, China seems to effectively contain the coronavirus outbreak even as the total number of cases crosses 340,000 worldwide. Gaza reports it, its first COVID-19 infections, putting authorities and international bodies on high alert. Guinea goes to ahead with elections despite a coronavirus outbreak and boycott calls. Amazon workers win crucial fight for paid time off amid the coronavirus outbreak. In our first story, with over 340,000 cases reported so far, the coronavirus continues to spread across the world. China, where the outbreak originated, has reported only one new infection in the past five days in the local level, with increasing indications that the country has been able to successfully contain mass infections. On the other side of the world, Italy has for the first time in days reported a slowing down of deaths caused by COVID-19. Italy re recently replaced China as one of the epicenters of the outbreak, as it reported the highest number of active cases and deaths in the past week. The US is now the country with the third highest number of cases after China and Italy at over 35,000, with over 15,000 cases being reported in New York alone. President Donald Trump is coming under heavy criticism as the federal government comes across as slow in responding amid a major shortage in protective equipment. In India, authorities are on high alert with many lockdowns being announced in over 80 districts until March 31st. India has so far reported over 425 cases with 8 deaths. The Gaza Strip has reported its first two confirmed cases of coronavirus infections. The Ministry of Health in Gaza announced on Sunday that two Palestinians found to be infected with the virus had recently travelled to Pakistan. They are in a stable condition. The Health Ministry also added that the two have been quarantined near the Egyptian border since their arrival. The Gaza administration led by Hamas has been on high alert ever since the infection broke out across the world. The authorities have taken measures to prevent large gatherings including closing down all restaurants, cafes, reception halls and even suspended Friday prayer congregations and mosques. The administration requested the residents of Gaza to exercise caution and begin social distancing. Following the news of the COVID-19 cases in Gaza, a delegation from the World Health Organization reached the region to assess and monitor the situation. The United Nations had earlier warned that the spread of the deadly disease to the Gaza Strip would be catastrophic. Gaza has been under a criminal blockade by Israel that prevents nearly 2 million people from accessing essential goods, including medical supplies. Gaza also faced routine bombardment and attacks from the Israeli military, which has absolutely devastated and diminished its public health infrastructure. The West African country of Guinea conducted a general election to vote for a new parliament on Sunday, March 22nd. The election happened despite a boycott call, threats of violence and the global coronavirus pandemic. The election was held across the along with a referendum to decide certain crucial amendments in the constitution. The National Assembly, which is the parliament of Guinea, has 114 seats, for which more than 43 parties are contesting. President Alpha Conde's rally for the Guinean people had won the last elections in 2013 with 53 seats. The crucial amendments that are part of the referendum include an increase in the presidential term from the present five years to seven years. This also means that though the current two-term limit will remain in the constitution, if the proposed amendment gets through, the incumbent President Conde can contest again for two terms. His present term is set to end in December. Other crucial amendments proposed including, include a ban on female genital mutilation, underage marriage and equal rights of divorce for women. Major opposition parties, the United Democratic Forces of Guinea, headed by former Prime Minister Selao Diallo and the Union of Republican Forces had given calls for boycott, objecting to the proposed extension of terms for the President. They also accused President Conde of electoral fraud and authoritarian tendencies. The vote was originally scheduled on March 1st. It was postponed due to allegations of fraud in the voter list. The regional group, the Economic Community of West African States or the ECOWAS had intervened and asked for the removal of around 2.4 million names, which are allegedly fake. The next story, in a major victory for workers' rights in the United States, Amazon workers have secured their rightful paid time off. Workers at different Amazon's delivery stations, led by Amazonians United, have been campaigning for paid time off or PTOs for more than a year. The victory comes as the Chicago delivery station workers got the management to finally grant PTOs as per company policy, making it technically, technically applicable for all. In 2019, Several delivery associates found that Amazon had been repeatedly violating local and state regulations for paid leaves and paid time off. Workers in California began the campaign for PTO, which spread across the US and was taken up in multiple delivery stations. In July 19, workers at Amazon's DCH1 delivery station in Chicago had taken up the campaign as part of the Amazon's United, Amazonians United for PTOs. The workers there found that Amazon had a policy for vacations and paid personal time off on paper, but did not reflect it in practice. 
The excuse given then was that the policy was only applicable for full-time workers. But in most delivery stations, almost all associates are hired as part-time workers. But company policy nonetheless grants time offs and vacations to all associates that contribute at least 20 hours a week, which is pretty much all of them. At a time when the US is dealing with a coronavirus outbreak, paid leave and time off have become crucial national issues. This is especially so, so for the de uh, delivery workers who will be the backbone of the country's fight against the pandemic. That's all we have in this episode of the International Daily Roundup. To read more about these stories, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. Yeah.